Hello, Internet. Welcome back to Final Fantasy XIV. Newfound Adventure. I don't feel like calling it Endwalker because Endwalker's done. Um, I was going to record this straight after the last episode, but uh, it crashed my entire computer. Something is up with OBS. It crashes when you try to exit it every single time. I, I don't know what's up with it. Anyway, let's find out what Ishtola has to say about a brother's grief. Huh. Whose brother? Vritra's brother. Okay, so we've got the thingy music. The dragons. Is this why we've not heard I Ashtaya? I am definitely curious to know how a void gate came to be hidden in the depths of these ruins. Mm-hmm. To tell that tale, we must first peer far to the south, and even further into... To Mericidia. And the dragons. An age five millennia past, when the Algan Empire sent an invading force to the shores of Merasidia. Yeah. Uh -huh. The southern people rallied around the commanding figures of Bahamut and Tiamat and fought fiercely to repel the would be conquerors. Indeed. With Bahamas defeat, however, the tide turned against them. Desperate to seize any advantage. Yeah, the, the demons. Resorted to some the warring triad. And the cloud of darkness. Emperor Zande forged a covenant with the cloud of darkness, sovereign among the all-devouring denizens of the void. He did. Thus bolstered by icons on one side and void sent on the other the two armies clashed in a battle of unspeakable carnage so much death so much loss it's interesting to have it kind of crushed together in that context because of course we fought the warring triads back in heaven's ward we fought the cloud of darkness in the, uh the world of darkness top of the crystal tower uh in two point 2.5 2.5 wouldn't have been um but of course they're flip sides of the same coin that's the whole point and the simplified it's odd i consider myself well versed in that period of history yet you speak as one who witnessed it happen. of course he saw it happen he was around Indeed, I did. I heard Tiamat's roar of defiance and sped toward that war-torn land. Along with my sibling, Ashdaya. Uh-huh. Who we haven't heard from. Who is missing... We dragons are not male or female, as men are wont to classify, but Elder Sister is the closest a mortal tongue can come to describing what she meant to me. Mm hmm I was the last of our brood to hatch, and Ashdaya cared for me where my sire could not. I like that clarification on just how meaningless gender is when it comes to dragons, at least from our perspective. Thus, I was with her when Tiamat rode. I was with her when she journeyed south. And I was with her when she fought against the Void Sentinel. So has she been drawn into the Void? Is that why we've not... Yet no matter how many of their vile fiends we cast down, more rose from the Abyss to take their place. Faced with an unwillable war of attrition, mm -hmm. Ashdaya risked her all on a final gamble. She plunged through the void gate itself to strike at the root of their strength. Because it specifically made mention that she is still silent. Awake, determined to lend what aid I could, 
But even as I came upon Alag's glittering tower, I saw the rift close behind her. And Ashdaya has been lost to us ever since. <sighs> I find I must retract my earlier claim of historical knowledge. Nowhere in the Crystal Tower's archives did I see mention of such noble sacrifice. Wow. That does not surprise me. To Alagan eyes, it must have seemed as if a lone dragon, driven to madness, simply dove through the gate and did not return. So has the Void Gate here been made by Vitra to try and get his sister back? For my part, I spent long years searching for the means to reunite with Ashdaya. Until I could search no more. Until Alag was dust. And the arts to open a Void Gate large enough to accommodate a dragon forever lost. Yet you have the beginnings of a gate right here, under the control of a harnessed device. Control. My discovery came before Radzat Han was founded. Though I scoured the lands for a method to cross the rift, it was beneath the sea that a I chanced to find a natural plane of fissure. It was, however, far too narrow to admit a worm's bulk. Only after our city rose upon the rock, and I could enlist the aid of Did our Emmett leader, know this? Did matters take a favorable turn? Their dedication was beyond reproach. Tirelessly, they worked to expand the fissure, and after decades of toil, finally grew to a size that a child So this is through. bigger than it was. Not long ago, you told us that you called out to your kin. But as Dyer's sounds. Yes, this silence, is the bit that I'm thinking of. I suspect the conclusion to your tale is not a joyful one. She's lost in the void somewhere. If With hope in my dead. Heart, I used a simulacrum to cross the threshold. But no, I did not find her. This is set up, though. This is not what the end of the tale. Was a host of void scent, clamoring around the opening they had sensed. It was but a moment, but enough. I had no choice but to retreat and allow the portal to contract once more. The gate was a threat to your people. You had to decide between endangering Razat Han and abandoning your sister. You chose the latter. Noble, as has been Vitra's way. Twas not that thy siblings scorned thy call. Twas that she was trapped beyond a barrier through which neither roar nor dragon may pass. Even now, in the desolate world of the Thirteenth. I can scarce imagine your pain, yet it was wise not to linger in that place. Too long a sojourn, and even a being of your power risks being warped into a creature of the void. Mm-hmm. But we can go there. You've seen this phenomenon before, when we stepped into the darkness. Yeah. <laughs> I want I want to choose this option, but I've already been told off once. For levity, so I'm gonna choose that option. <laughs> As did I. Were it not for Une and Doga, or Nero, for that matter, we might never have. <laughs> um. Do you remember what happened to Nero? Yes. How his wounds allowed the void's corruption to enter his body and twist his ether. He turned purple. Yes. Had it been allowed to progress much longer. I presume he would have been fully transformed. He's still not right after that. Then there is little hope for Ashdaya. Well, that has yet to be seen. Ah, no. I hadn't meant to. I speak only of possibilities. Mm, good work, Graha. 
The scales of the first brood are extraordinarily resistant to ethereal fluctuations. They are the protective talisman's core components, after all, and even the corruption I described would struggle to overcome. Of course. With the warding scale in one's possession, one could conceive of oh, a stay in the 13th without being warped by its energies. Uh -huh. Be that as it may, it is too late to rescue my sister. 5,000 years too late. Mm, don't say that. And now countless others look to me for guidance and protection. Why is the inside of your mouth blue? So we'll go then. Silence. So when I sensed intruders in the ruins, I came only to ensure that the gate remained closed. That, and to secure the treasure, of course. Of course. I wish only to forget the rest. Oh. Stola? Has a twinkle in her eye. That was a very deliberate linger on Stola there. Millennia have passed since last I saw her, but I see her die in memory still, clear and vivid. The 13th. What chaos must consume that world? Peach's grief for a lost sibling will be no mystery to Estinian. His hath been a life entwined with sorrow even before he became host in Nidhogg's essence. I wondered how one of the first broods could simply vanish and leave no trace of her passage. Now I have my answer. So, they managed not only to expand the fissure, but also manipulate it as one might a gate. Astonishing. Is there any chance I could learn more of how this feat was accomplished? I, I will tell you what I can. First, however, I must return to the High Crucible and arrange to replace the Guardians you so handily destroyed. It will not do to leave the gate undefended. Ah, my apologies. We were perhaps a touch zealous in our wish to uncover the vault's secrets. If the constructs can be repaired, we will be happy to offer our assistance. That will not be necessary. Much as I retain spare vessels for myself, we keep duplicate guardians on hand for such eventualities. In any case, we should return to Vazatan. Well. That was most interesting so all of Emmett's clues about civilizations in the reflections could surprise us is the void going to be the subject of our next storyline you know the Asian's biggest mistake That would certainly be an interesting line going forward, wouldn't it? And it would mean that the story builds upon the past as opposed to just completely ignoring it. There is much about the Voigate that I cannot even begin to explain. I must convince Vitra to share everything he knows. No, Vitra speaks as if Ashdai is a lost cause, but I wager he feels differently in his heart of hearts. While I am loath to keep Kral waiting much longer, I cannot bring myself to leave before hearing more of Reacher's tale. It was a most enjoyable expedition for which I am grateful. As for mine evaluation, I shall impress upon the Lopwich that the treasure vault is incomplete without daunting sentinels to test the metal of any would-be intruders. Yeah, I, I feel like the, the Lopwich are going to be building the deep dungeon. I promise we will discuss the Void Gate further, but first I must attend to the matter of the Vault Sentinels. As your instruments have no doubt informed you, the Capiculu has been reduced to so much scrap. Please bring a new one out of storage and see that it is conveyed to its post along with some few lesser constructs. 
constructs. Was it too modern, robbers? Fiends born of the Tower Zot? Well, the sisters, do not tell me a blasphemy yet runs free. Uh, <laughs> la 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 la. <laughs> I have no idea. Why such guilty faces? Surely it isn't you who are responsible for this. Oh. Um, well, the details aren't important. I shall see it done immediately. <laughs> Oopsie. Clearly a life of simple adventure. And with that, the vault will soon be secure once more. Now, I believe you had questions. Quite a few, in fact. But I'd like to begin with the gate itself. It is still functional, yes. Indeed. Which is why I saw it sealed with an alchemically forged lock and warded it with my magics. Such power must not fall into the wrong hands. In truth, the primary reason for the vault's construction was to keep the gate hidden from the outside world. So much effort for such a little door. That little door you speak of leads to an abyss teeming with unspeakable horrors. That said, in its current state, it would admit only the lowliest of voice scents. And from this side, no man would be able to pass through. No man? I should think Alphano would fit, given a firm enough push. <laughs> Physical size is only one consideration. The true restriction hinges upon the etheric density of the soul in transit. And yet you succeeded in expanding this diminutive portal and sending your simulacrum to the 13th. Thanks to my brilliant alchemists, I should have... Uh, full stop. I should have destroyed the anomaly when I found it, but instead I bade them devise a means to control it. After much experimentation, they accomplished the impossible. A method was conceived by which my magics could manipulate the fissure and transform it into a serviceable gate. But the process has long since been forgotten. Once I had given up searching for his dire, there was no need to preserve such esoteric and dangerous knowledge. Thus has the gate lain dormant for years uncounted. Our own passage to the 13th was made relatively simple thanks to the Crystal Tower. An ancient mechanism channeled the tower's vast stores of energy to open a void gate, one bound to a covenant made with the Cloud of Darkness. Once that sovereign entity was beaten back, however, the covenant was broken and the doorway severed from its connection to the void. Theoretically, it should be possible to reconnect the gate by forging a new pact with another voice sense, but such deals usually end in betrayal and death. Mm, you seem to have struck a bargain of your own, Demogen. Though it serves you well in battle, be aware that the beneficial nature of your arrangement is the exception which proves the rule. Well, our, our benefits with, from Heidelin. In any case, we should attempt to gain an understanding of the bounty gates. I hope you could resume the search for your sister. As I have already explained, I put those futile hopes to rest centuries ago. My place and my duty is here now. Uh, I had meant to ask, what prompted you to search for the vault in the first place? To see if the legends were true. Again, I'm not going to blame Mystinian. Ah, you have seen... The fabulous wealth from this, as you have seen, the fabulous wealth from the stories is quite real, if not its rumoured origin. But I'm afraid I must assert a prior claim. I've been adding to that trove for years, little by little. But the time has come to spend it that I may alleviate my people's suffering. Um, we are of one mind. We had no intention of taking it for ourselves. Speak for yourself. Is that right, my friend? Nod. Stola, on the other hand. Your Excellency, would you object if I were to conduct a closer examination of the gates? I will make no attempt to open it, of course. I owe you and yours a debt that can never be repaid. Whatever boon you ask of me, you shall have it. You are most gracious. I shall take full advantage of your permission. 
Uh, would that I could join thee in thy study, but the Lopperits will be anxious to receive my reports. I beg my leave of you. And I must be off to Charlene as well. Mistress Kral was eager to speak with you about that request, so please come back to the Annex as soon as you are able. Oh, well, for now. Hmm. Stola's going to cause some mischief. We can discuss my refindings once I return. They'll not be rid of me so easily. Hmm. Yes, the seeds have been sown for a plot line there. You may now undertake the Chronicles of a New Era quest series, Myths of the Realm. Speak with the fresh-faced students at the Baldesian Annex to accept the first quest. So, Kryle's stuff that she wanted to talk to us about is the Myths of the Realm. I hope you enjoyed the expedition, at least. Otherwise, it was a heavy purse to pay for a treasure map leading to a treasure we couldn't keep. The difficult part in all this will be deciding how best to put these riches to use. Will you lend me your assistance in these deliberations? Of course. Thank you, Demogen. Demogen and I are in this together. I will follow her example. Very, very interesting. Cutscene. Meanwhile, elsewhere. In the void. In the world of darkness, in fact. That's a big throne. So this is where our mysterious figure is once more Ooh Sigils of Elements You seem familiar. Nice armor. Deliberately not showing their face. I sensed the breaching of a gate, but it was not instigated from this side. It was thrown open from the other. I too felt it. A rare occurrence, yes, but such a tiny portal is beneath our notice. There are more pressing matters at hand. An opportunity is upon us, the coming of which we have awaited for nigh on 10,000 years. We dare not let it slip our grasp. Yet we must not underestimate she who bested the cloud of darkness. Even restrained by a covenant, the cloud is no feeble wisp to be dispersed by some flesh and blood mortal. Are these the four fiends? Bah, let her come. I will drown the world and watch this fleshling gasp for breath in her final moments. So these are the elemental arch fiends? Knight in black. Your zeal is admirable, but forget not our cause. Think back on our struggles beneath this sunless sky. Remember why we cede not our will to fight. It is time we set the war in motion and win redemption for our star. Your design! Reminds me of X-Death. A mystery has been set up. Yeah, I feel like that's drawing on classic FF, FF villains. Sharing the wealth. 
Shall we begin? If we are to spend the treasure wisely, then we must find, first determine which groups would benefit most from monetary assistance. Some of my citizens may find it intimidating to speak with a satrap directly, so I'd ask that you act in my stead. Imogen, you are to visit Akali and Yeldlimad. Speak with Matsya and his people and listen to their grievances. Stinian, I bid you do the same at Palika Stand. I will be conducting my own inquiries at the Giant School grounds. Okay. Once you believe you have ascertained the needs of the populace, we can reconvene at Magadutra. Hi, Matsya. Ah, Demogen. I was so glad to see you had returned unharmed. You finished with the boat then? Not. Anything the village desperately needs? Well, I suppose Kalzal's loss hit us the hardest. I've been trying to find buyers for my fish, but although I sell a few here and there, it's so much more difficult than it was before. Everyone's still struggling to rebuild their lives. But now we're just banding together as best we can. So they need someone to set up trade. They need Tataru. Maybe this is Tataru's storyline. What with the void and all that. Being a creature of the void herself. Greetings and welcome, traveller. If this is your first visit to, the, visit to Thavne, then you must try my special Amri Lassie. It's refreshing zest. We, yeah, we've spoken to you before. What could such a wonder cost you under? Normally I part with three bottles for the generous price of 19,800 gil. But for you, I am willing to go as low as even 10,000. You'd be practically stealing from me. I am not Estinian. Estinian? Who is this? Gah. You're the one who was that sp who was with that spear-toting fellow. Well, you can hardly blame a man for trying. The world may long no longer be on fire, but we're still sifting through the ashes, so to speak. Sister, spare me. We might as well have that ugly tower back for the few sc scant few travellers we see these days. I myself barely have the coin to buy at local prices. I tell you, if I didn't charge the odd adventurer a small fortune for afternoon tea, I'd be scavenging for scraps in the street. Yeah, so they are in need of trades. How uh. fair's the port? Well, it's in shambles, isn't it? The trade routes are open once more now that the dangerous path, certainly. But no small number of merchants have to sell their ships to make ends meet in the short term. Add to that the sailors we lost in the final days, and it's little wonder that flow of exports is no more than a pitiful trickle. If Kalzal and his consortium were still with us, I'm sure he'd have found a way to turn our fortunes around. Now that was a man who got things done, God rest his soul. You have spoken with key local figures and gained an understanding of the populace's hardships. Bashan awaits your reports. Yeah, so they need trade. I mean, we could get the... The people of not Alamigo, the other place, Kugani. We could get um, what's his name? Hancock involved. Don't know whether that's a good idea, because that would get the is it the syndicate involved? Hmm, Stinian. Oh, ah. It would seem my stint on Vitra's back did not go unnoticed, and I couldn't take two steps before another Thavnerian was thanking me profusely for saving their home. Mm. It's a hard life, Estinian. Ah, my advisor's return. I've just made it back myself. Why do you retain this vessel now that your true form is known? You could have flown across the island in a fraction of the time. Uh, be that as it may, the sight of a massive creature descending from the sky can be startling, to say the least. And there are few places I can enter comfortably without risk of flattening some cart or stall. <laughs> hmm, fair enough. As for my inquiries, the people of Palika stand were unanimous in their reply. They are surviving. Resources were stretched to the limit when refugees were pouring in, but they persevered with some assistance from Yedlamad. 
From what I understand, they have always been an independent community, hunters and foragers and the like, and I was assured that the jungle provides for their needs, for the most part. Halika's stand has weathered the disaster better than most, it seems. I myself heard good news and bad. The quarrymen were cautiously optimistic, having just sold a full wagon of giant skull to a foreign trader. But such visages are few and far between. Compared to our best years, the weight of stone leaving Thavnir has been light indeed. Our nation is small and isolated, its prosperity dependent on a steady stream of exports. Sounds familiar. We must identify any obstacles to the flow of trade so we may begin working to remove them. Tell me, what did you learn in Akyali and Yedlimad? Huh. I see. Without a dedicated buyer, the average fisherman must struggle to offload his daily catch. Which is why I believe we should first address the lack of ships and shortage of able-bodied sailors in Yedlimad. I'm reminding, reminded of a child I spied as I made my way back to the palace. His father lost at the sea when the beasts sunk their vessel. So many variations of the same tragic tale repeated over and over. So many lives lost. Enough grief to drown in, if we let ourselves be overcome. But we will not. Demogen, Estinian, I will consider the perspectives you brought me and devise a plan to help my people confront this adversity. Come, I'd like you to be in attendance when I announce the proposal to my assembled functionaries. Nod. Whoa. Excellent voice acting. The riches the radiant host have retrieved were hoarded in Al Zadar's name. A fortune I set aside for a future day of me. Like today. Dragon's gonna hoard. In better times, I would leave such a task to our capable Ahawan. God's rest his soul. Hmm. Finding myself bereft of his counsel in the here and now, I will assume the responsibilities of mine office directly. Firstly, the treasure shall be sold for more convenient currency. Thence, invested into the trading port of Yedlaman. Our merchants must have their operations restored mm -hmm. and their ships rebuilt. Commerce must flow once more. Yes. None were spared the tragedy of the final days. Of this, I am well aware. But an absence was created by the loss of Karazal's consortium. And by filling it, we provide new means for our fishermen, our artisans, and others to bring their wares to distant markets. It's surprising how much you can care for little kind of politics stuff like this. When it's built on the foundation that it's had. And what of the children who were left without family to care for them? Hmm. That is a concern which weigheth heavily upon my mind. I need like an orphanage or something. The gift of coin will soon be exhausted, leaving these young souls adrift on the fringes of our society. Like what happens in Uldar. Nay, a proper solution. One which doth guarantee their welfare for years to come. Apprenticeships. Thou hast surely seen how other nations rise to meet them. 
Uh, well, Uldar fails miserably. What does thou deem the wisest course? Uh... I don't know who does that. <laughs> I see. We create a reliable source of revenue. Mm -hmm. Let us put this idea into practice. A contract shall be written requiring all who receive of ours a dar's treasure. I was right about the orphanage, though. Is this going to be a reference to something? Something with Kazal seems most appropriate. It's so interesting that you just thought he was like a, a reasonably minor NPC when you first met him. Very first time we got to Thavnir in 6.0. And now he's, Do you know. You object to this proposition? Many here lost loved ones to the beasts. In that time of strife, any one of us could have broken. Any one of us may have been taken by despair. When I think of Kalzal, I feel no hatred. Only a stinging regret that we could not save him as well. Is that the same person that does the voice actor for Graha? Sounds familiar. Isn't that right, men? Hmm. This bodes well for that boy. The rod was it? Perhaps he can cut ties with that shady peddler. Hmm. Unless there's more to it than that. Let it be done. The Kalzal Foundation. Henceforth, this initiative shall be known as the Kalzal Foundation. Nabdeen, thou art to assemble a patrol and ensure that no child in this city liveth in school. Politics going to politic. See to the management of our funds and make haste. Surely somebody's going to make a tidy profit off this, though. Corruption and the. Mind you, they'd be crossing a dragon. Don't know how. How far people want to go with that. Dragon and man. Side by side in pursuit of a brighter morrow. Reminded of Ishgard. Hmm. Yeah, so some conclusions, some things being set up. Somewhere around here, there was a quest. Preacher is warming to his role as satrap. Clearly, all those years behind the curtain were not spent napping. Bridging the rift. Thank you for putting forth Kalzal's name. 
Those whose lives he enriched will take comfort in seeing his legacy honoured. You will forgive me for not speaking sooner, but I may bear a message from Archon Ishtola. She asks that you meet her at the High Crucible at your earliest convenience. Understood. Thank you. Ishtola must have finished her study of the Void Gates. Shall we hear what she has to say, then? I will go with you. To make sure she's not up to mischief, no doubt. I thought the satrap would be too busy setting up the foundation. My clerks have been the well-oiled cogs for this administration since before I went and assumed the office. I understand what needs to be done. And I am curious to learn what conclusions your Archon has reached concerning the gate's unique construction. Me too. As you wish. Allow me to lead the way, Your Excellency. Pretty certain he knows the way, Estinian. It being his city and all. Quest accepted. Shall we hear what your scholarly comrade has to say? For one who claims it is too late to save his sister, Vidra seems awfully interested in what a revela whatever revelations you stolen might have to share. Well, yes. Wouldn't you? Voice acting? Right, here we all are. You discovered something new. She does sound chipper, doesn't she? I took a closer look at that device. I was able to determine how it keeps the void gate sealed, but not how it might instead be employed to expand the opening. For that, I would need to reference the technique developed by Vritra's alchemists, no records of which appear to have survived the intervening years. Mm hmm But... We know this, so why have you sent for us? Have you learned all of value or not? <laughs> Patience, Sister Nian. Patience, good sir. One must introduce the subject before launching into specifics. She is a scholar, Estinian. This is how you lecture. From what we understand, travel between worlds is accomplished by passing through the nebulous rift which exists between them. Yes. Picture, if you will, the moment you were called to the first. Lots of stars. And falling. And crystals of... Bits and pieces. You touched a focus of some kind to help the Exarch pinpoint your location. Mm -hmm. His summoning spell then channeled the energies of the Crystal Tower to begin your journey to his world. Mm -hmm. Yes. I remember. The magics tore a hole in the wall separating Source and Shard and cast you into the intervening nothingness. It did. In that place, the laws of nature hold no sway. Is this a new new uh, image just for this? Because I don't recall seeing Gusetsu and Yotsio and... What's, what's the purple thing in the top right? I can't tell. We've got... Um, Black Wolf there. We've got... Is that Veen? Like, in the, the, the tiny one in the centre? Um, I can't quite make out the others. We've got Uyange here. Uh, I think that might be... Xenos? No. They've got Horchefond. I think that's Horchefond. Yet even through this realm of temporal and spatial instability, you were born safely to your destination in the first. Uh, yeah, but not after, not until after, you know, some issues with you guys. The feet that guided you across such an unimaginable distance, both physical and metaphorical, was nothing short of a miracle. And yet the Asians can do it at will. the many voids sent found in the source who guides them here and how that is an excellent question 
and one I've never ever stopped to consider. I know we can summon void scents, but there are just void scents that are here naturally. So how do they get here? An excellent question. I said that too. Though there are several methods by which the Void's denizens might intrude upon our world, the rituals of summoning are the most typical. Mm -hmm. For example, let us consider the Gargoyle, a creature of middling power. Mm -hmm. Which one's the Gargoyles? <laughs> Those guys. Ah, this is where this cutscene comes in. To call upon such an entity, the prospective summoner must force open a void gate. These are the lambs of Dalamud, aren't they? The portal lasts in Tamtara. And is relatively small, allowing only an imp or other lesser being to squeeze through with their physical body intact. Mm -hmm. Our more powerful gargoyle, however, is too large for that. Creating a gate big enough for him would require vast amounts of energy, far beyond the reserves of any one mortal practice. Demons from Castle's Val. Instead, tis far more common to bring over only the entity's soul. We had a taste of that ourselves when a certain uh -huh. exarch dragged us to the first. <laughs> and is that it put into a new body? So they're all just waiting around. And just as our bodies remained in our world, the void sense physical form is left behind in the 13th. Mm hmm. What happens to it? Once at its destination, the summoned soul is granted a temporary shell to inhabit. In the gargoyle's case, a stone effigy has proven a suitable vessel. Yeah. Ah. Okay. So, this is how the void works. We kind of knew this, realistically. But it's nice to have it explained in a... Wait. You said that Void Scent must be called here deliberately by someone in the source, reeled in like a fisherman with his catch. Exactly. For a being to navigate the chaos of the rift, with or without form, there must needs be a guiding agent on the other side. When the hordes poured forth from Alag's Great Gate, it was the technologists who drew them through. Maybe there's somebody still alive. Some things still alive. To my knowledge, planar fissures are in essence natural passages between our world and the void, which require no such guidance to traverse. Why is only the boundary between the source and the 13th so fragile? So much so that it often tears open of its own accord. Or does it? I believe solving that mystery is key to understanding travel between the source and its reflections. And how do you intend to get your answers? By sending us places. No. The danger is too great. Stola. Perhaps. But what some call danger, others think of as adventure. Oh dear. <laughs> Don't smile! Were you not listening to my tale? Never mind that the means to expand the gate has been lost to the ages. Even could you force the portal wide enough, you would be greeted by an Hey! Killed gods! The very instant you step through. Killed gods! 
I assure you, I was most attentive. And I agree that to go alone would be certain death. But if I were to bring along one who has already braved the 13th and humbled the cloud of darkness, well, I imagine my <laughs> would be much Psych. <sighs> So much for taking it easy. I had a feeling you might say that. Did you now? Once again, I put my life in your ever reliable hands. Mm. That said, as much as I would like to march straight back to the void gate. There is the small matter of being unable to open it without the Sartrap's personal authority. Da, 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 da. <laughs> As I've said before, I will grant you and yours any boon you choose to name. Provided, Provided it doesn't endanger my people. You have my word that we will take every precaution. Not a single void scent will be allowed to threaten Rods at Han, assuming we manage to expand the portal in the first place. Uh, uh, this she has a plan. Of course she has a plan. Actually, I had hoped you might help us with that. I presume the alchemists you retained supplied you with some explanation of their methodology. That they did. House Daimir was overseeing the project. Hmm. Ah, yes. The family associated with the great work. Yes. I did not fully comprehend the theory, but their research began with a void scent which had slipped through the fissure. After a thorough examination, they created an arcane simulacrum possessed of similar qualities. Oh. Man-made void scent, if you will. It was apparently indispensable in their efforts to enlarge the gate. Hmm. A man-made void scent. That sounds odd. Yes. Being great admirers of the Archons, House Daimir submitted detailed notes to Charlene's official committee. They expected praise and accolades for their similar crimes. Ah, so chances are... ...but us devastated to be informed that their work had been classified as prohibited material. Interesting. Very interesting. If that's true, then those notes might still be stored in a forbidden archive somewhere. Not Google, of course, since that library had yet to be built. Which leaves us with... Moving on. Moving on. With Graha's favourite place to sneak around. The Forbidden Archives and the Numenon. Indeed. Numenon's restricted stacks may very well hold a copy. So, back to Charlayan it is. In which case, I say we head directly to Charlayan. Ooh, what is going on with the ears? Flickering textures. Stinian? Uh, Stinian? Unless you anticipate needing help to reach the high shelf. I see myself being of little use. <laughs> I still need to find Mirad and tell him about the Kalzal Foundation. Stinian is adopting a child. Well done, Stinian. Let us be on our way as well. Yes, let's. I wonder how long the story is going to last for this. We're up to three-ish hours. Bashan has his reservations, but he would like to see his sister. To venture into the void. Do I sit idly by? Or do you help? Hmm. It's been um, widely speculated for, for years now that the Void is somewhere that would play more into stuff. Speak with the Stola. 
at the Etherite Plaza and have her accompany you. They want to get some use out of that, do they? Hi, Stola. If we're to enter Numenon's restricted archives with a minimum of fuss, then we must secure the permission of the forum. First, however, we shall need to enlist the cooperation of a member to broach the matter on our behalf. Who do you think might be inclined to assist us? No one springs to mind? Hmm, what does Scarlet Montechain? He did come to Graha's defence during the inquiry, after all. That's how he plays into this. Ah, it is settled. Let us head to Phenomenon and see if he's willing to help us once more. Yeah, so that's going to be where we're going to start uh, Gods of the Realm. Which I'm quite looking forward to doing. Ah, a law place. Talk. If I was pressed to name our allies in the forum, Skull of Montechain would certainly be at the top of the list. Hopefully he agrees to aid us with our request. Fingers crossed. Ah, Skolok Montechain. Ah, visitors, and quite esteemed ones at that. What may I do for you? Pray forgive the intrusion, Skolok, but we were hoping you might help us secure permission to enter Numenon's restricted archives. Oh, no furtive forays into the stacks this time, eh? <laughs> I applaud this newfound sense of proprietary. Yet in all this wide world of comparative serenity, what so compels you to disturb a vault of forbidden wisdom? The skirt of his robe looks silly. Hmm. Fascinating. I had no idea such a technique existed. I would have been surprised if you had. If my assumption is correct, the research left behind by House Daymare has lain dormant in Charlene's archive for many centuries. And if you unearth this research, what then? Surely you don't intend to cross over into the void. Uh, that is, in fact, precisely what we intend. To what end, pray tell? To develop a method of traversing the rift, for one, that I might keep my word to a distant friend. Friend? Sentiment aside, I have journeyed to the end of existence. I have heard, felt, and thought endlessly about the truth of our world and the echo of its future, and yet I want to understand everything, to unravel it all down to its very last secrets. What scholar worthy of the name wouldn't force open a void gate or two if a grand revelation was the promised reward? <laughs> Marvellous. An audacious proposal worthy of Master Matoya herself. And after hearing the whys and the wherefores, I, for one, do not believe you would use the knowledge for ill. I see no reason not to present your request for the forum's consideration. Is this going to take time until the next patch? Although, your petition would be better received if you also have the support of another well-placed acquaintance. My Master Fortuno, of course. He can hardly ignore any earnest requests from his dear children's most tre treasured comrades. I was hesitant to approach him directly, but there is no denying that having Master Fortuno on our side would tip the balance in our favour. Very well, we will pay a visit to the Levier estate and plan our, plead our case. Uh, one last thing before you go. I would consider it a personal favour if you might share with me the discoveries you make in the void. My appetite for knowledge is every bit as insatiable as yours, I'd wager, so if you could see your way to indulging an old man's curiosity... Of course, Skullock. We will be sure to pass on any revelations. Is it Tataru that is this the, the cause of the Void's endless summoning? Just a thought. Maybe she's older than we think. Right there, House Levier Butler. What do you have to say? Ah, Mistress Demogen, Mistress Ishtola, how may I be of service? We've come to speak with Master Fortune now. Is he home by any chance? Yes, the Master is in residence. I shall inform him that he has guests. Nod. Well, well. Emilians would invite you inside for tea, but I assume this is not a social visit. You have some matter of import to discuss? 
Then pray proceed. You have my full attention. Paid up. Paid down. Hmm. Porsche, no. Well, I suppose I should praise you for following the proper protocols this time around. Scarlet call Montechain express much the same sentiment. I assure you, we'll not attempt to circumvent the forum's authority again. Unless it is absolutely necessary, of course. Of course. You do understand that the restricted archives are restricted for good reasons, yes? If no pressing need exists, then why risk the consequences of employing this forbidden knowledge? For a brother who misses his sister. She was his guardian and his friend. A selfless hero who crossed the rift between worlds to save her homeland from horror and suffering. But the brother has given up on thoughts of reunion. He spends his efforts elsewhere, watching over a people yet healing from the flames of the final days, loyal to his duty while betraying the longing in his heart. It is no vital mission, perhaps, reuniting these siblings, but it feels a worthy course to pursue all the same. As for one who feared losing his own loved ones and sp spent years in research to prevent it, surely you appreciate how painful such a separation must be? Hmm. Clever, Ishtara, clever. Hmm, reflections are still very much a mystery to us. Offering to share your experiences in the first should constitute a fair exchange for our cooperation. Do not celebrate just yet. The form must still be convinced. I will add your request to the list of today's deliberations and deliver the decision to you at the Baldesian Annex. Okay. Fortune of has been added to the unending codex. I find it interesting that it is taking us to the place where the Myths of the Realm is starting. I wonder if this is where it's going to leave it for... One assumes that... Oh. One assumes that Newfound Adventure is going to be the title for the, pa the final patch. Uh, final quest of the patch. Ah, hello, gentlemen. So, what did the form decide? Uh, to put it bluntly, Master Matoya has burned some bridges here in Charlayan and salted the earth for good measure. When it became clear that her student was the petitioner in question, well, no few members voiced their discontents. Then the chamber was reminded, in no uncertain terms, I might add, of the incredible debt we owe to you and your companions. <laughs> that served to silence the grumbles and stiffen a few spines, and it was agreed that allowing you to enter to the archives was the least we could do in return. <laughs> That is wonderful news. Thank you both for speaking on our behalf. Yes, well, as I'm sure you are aware, this permission was not extended lightly. Forbidden knowledge is to be treated with the utmost caution, and there will be repercussions if it is not. I wish you well in your endeavour, and bid you good day. <laughs> Grumpy Fortune no returns. Ever the same, that one. Uncompromising? Aye, but that very stoicism is exactly what Charlene needed to guide it through not one, but two exoduses. Fabulous! Oh, there she is. That went rather well, I think. As a child, I dreamed up any number of schemes for getting my hands on those forbidden terms. Now I can simply walk in through the door. Our focus will be on finding House Damo's research notes, of course, but the thought of so much knowledge at my disposal has me feeling a little giddy. Restricted reading. Right, I'm going to end that episode there. Don't know how many um, quests are left, but I need to go and get something to eat because my stomach is starting to rumble. And whilst the microphone is very good... If it gets much louder, uh, and I mean very good at, you know, 
cutting out sound. Um, if it gets any louder, it might start picking it up. Starving. So I will catch you all in what I imagine is probably going to be the final part. I can't imagine there's too many more quests, but start of a new story, so I could be wrong. It could be that this bit doesn't even get used because of how I'll have split things up in post. Who knows? Thank you very much for watching. Anyway, if you have enjoyed the episode, do please give it a like, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Stay safe. Cheerio. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, why not click the like button and consider subscribing. Remember, you can ring the bell notification icon to get notified when new videos go live. And until next time, cheerio.